Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification. Focusing on the organisation of an ecosystem, and in particular on how materials are cycled. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how materials are cycled. So in today's tutorial, we'll have a look at the water cycle then move on to the carbon cycle. So these are your specification points for today. So as usual, have a read through these and come back to them at the end. Make sure you know all of these points. So elements and compounds are not created. They are merely cycled into different forms. And we see this in our own bodies as we take in proteins, convert them to amino acids, and use these amino acids to build the essential proteins that we need in the body. But we're going to have a look at the carbon and water cycles. So the water cycle is used to move water through the ecosystem. The water we drink is the same water that existed even in Jurassic times and it is cycled through the environment. And as it is a cycle we can begin at any point. Therefore we'll begin in, we shall begin in the lakes, oceans and trees. So have a look at this diagram, it's going to make a lot more sense to you in a second. So transpiration, we've discussed the transpiration stream in a previous video. And this works to send water taken in by the roots of the plants back into the atmosphere through the stem of the plants as water vapour in order to sustain it. We then get evaporation. So water evaporates, changing state from liquid to gas from bodies of water such as lakes and oceans and ponds. Light energy from the sun causes this. After evaporation and transpiration, which return water to the atmosphere, the water vapour cools, forming liquid clouds. When liquid clouds are formed, they can be pushed far distances by wind. Then rain, snow, sleet and hail fall from the clouds into the bodies of water in the land. Sometimes, when there is a large amount of precipitation, water runs along the earth to enter bodies of water as well. Some water that falls is absorbed into the ground, and this can then be stored in aquifers, these underground permeable rocks. We call that infiltration. So this process then cycles. So that's our water cycle, really simple. So if you go through these slides and just commit them to memory, maybe even draw some diagrams in your notes, that will be really easy peasy. And in the exam, they tend to ask you things like name some processes by which water is returned to the atmosphere. Well, then you would say the first two, so evaporation and transpiration. Okay, so that's just an example for you. So the carbon cycle, returns carbon from organisms to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide to be used by plants in photosynthesis. So this diagram will make a lot more sense to you in a second. So just follow the path shown by the arrows. So we know that carbon has to be cycled through the environment and there are only four processes in this cycle that you need to know for this process. We'll begin with how carbon enters the atmosphere. So combustion is burning. Now, humans have harnessed combustion to transfer energy. We burn fossil fuels in order to provide energy. Burning any carbon-containing compounds releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Now, once the carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere, it must return into organisms, and this occurs during photosynthesis. Plants take in carbon dioxide and convert the carbon into glucose. Now, in the process of respiration, animals consume plants, transferring carbon along. The glucose is then used in respiration and converted to carbon dioxide to return to the atmosphere. Then we have decomposition. So when plants and animals die, microorganisms known as decomposers break down their bodies, causing a release of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. 
They also break down organisms into their mineral ions and return these to the soil. And from here, this can then be taken up by plants. So these kinds of decomposers are known as detritivores. So therefore, we have our four main processes that you need to know for the carbon cycle. Combustion, respiration, photosynthesis and decomposition. So make sure you know these inside out. Now let's have a look at a practice question. So I'll read through the statements, you can then pause the video, have a go and we'll go through the answers. So A. Infiltration occurs when water is absorbed by the ground. B. Respiration takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. C. Combustion is a key part of the water cycle. And D. Rain is an example of condensation. So pause the video, have a go and then we'll go through some answers. Okay, so here we go. A is indeed true. Infiltration occurs when water is absorbed by the ground. It might then be stored within that. B, respiration takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. False, it adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. C, also false, combustion is a key part of the carbon cycle. And D is absolute nonsense, so that's also false. So that's our practice questions done. All of our specification points are covered. A really lovely tutorial there. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.